missionaries coming from Iran uh, arrived in uh, Germany a long time ago and has a practice of sculpture, but also based on the body. First of all, I'm very pleased to be part of the lecture, and I think it's a very nice concept to have that archive before you start uh, going to an exhibition, kind of a looking at Bruce Nam's work, which comes from very different directions, yeah. already having that discussion beforehand. And I hope that this discussion doesn't, mini, not minimize, but doesn't ascetize ascet, or over-heroizing Bruce okay. Nauman. We would, we would not make any favors to him or to his work, I believe. I mean, looking at his, I was always afraid to go too deep into his work, especially the, mm. the sculptural works. I always try to escape, not to stare on them. I think when you like something and you're staring at something, you take something away from it. What was your first experiment with his work? The first one was LA Air. It was, I think, 1993 in a bookshop or a, or a record shop in Berlin, uh, Gelbe Musik, and they were selling um, records by artists and experimental music, uh, like Vita Kunchi to Laurie Anderson mm. to... Uh, Brotas, I remember I bought Brotas, uh, the interview with the cat. Yes. And La, uh, LA Air, but I didn't know anything about him. I just liked the book. And the collection of the Vital Kunchi, uh, some other artists, um, it was a record, something with bass that I remember. But it didn't ring a bell to me. Uh, I was not very connected to the contemporary art. It was more the contemporary dance and uh, music. So it's absolutely the other direction that, uh, as Bruce Norman experienced, so coming through the contemporary dance to the contemporary art. It's a reverse idea how I, how I try to understand art or sculpture. And, but later I, I, I had to show at the sculpture and um, I was part of the Münster, Skulpturprojekte Münster, mm -hmm. 2007, mm -hmm. where he was invited, I think 30 years before, to do the same work, the work, uh, the, uh, depression. I think three thirty years before he visited that space spot, and Kaspar Kunish proudly told me as we met. I was very young. He said, uh, "You know, even Bruce." Nam I had a problem with proposals, and he said, "You know, even Bruce Nauman did proposals, and it was rejected. And he now he's doing it after thirty years." And as I heard that it was demolished, I was again thinking of the problem of the proposal. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm. I so say it was not a show and it was quite, uh, how to say, uh, not the core of his work. Very specific things, the book. The Absolutely. Book. But the second encounter that I had was uh, in, in Art Institute of Chicago. I was doing the piece, uh, this is, I was working with Susan Guest and my piece was upstairs, and it's the, the the title was the French curve. The when you the the rulers, which is soft, and you measure kind of the body with it. And I always had a problem with Duchamp's idea of the measurement when he accidentally let it fall. The three standard stoppages. Yes, yes. and yes. I always thought that it's not an accident that the dimension the dimensions of it, whatever it is, are flexible. So. It is formed, and it's thinking of the history of, of art or looking back, it's never an accident that things happen. It's the pressure, it is the burden that forms things and deforms things. So, and um, yeah, I remember as a child that I was, my father measured me and like 95 centimeters, and I, in the bed I was scrolling and I said, but I'm not anymore 95. <laughs> So, so it's a perspective, how you think, what measurement is. And then Susan Guest told me, Nari, let's go down. I want to show you something in the collection. And she, she showed me this, it was a piece untitled. I don't know if it was a rubber or resin. It was a bending, mm -hmm. um, it was maybe not soft, but it was almost like it could flew away. It was just ripping away. So that was my other memory of it. I have a question about, I, I love the, what you said about looking and the bird and because there's like two opposite things there, right? One is 
if I look at the bird, then the bird flies away, you know, and I lose that moment of beauty. And it's also, you said, you know, if, if I look too much at the work, you know, this, you know, there is always, I get that a lot with uh, artist friends, you know, that they say, well, if that's very close to you and you look at it, there's almost like this idea of possession, right? Yeah. You know, that then it will possess you, you know, and they're opposite. One is that if you look, it goes away. So you almost have to be present to it without looking and then the fear of possession. And my question to go to the point is, what is the initial position in which you find yourself with Nauman? You know, when you think of Nauman, do you think about, you know, the artist as a hero? Do you think about it, some of the specific works? You think about your own work? I mean, what, what is your initial reaction when the, in front of the name, mostly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I absolutely can relate to the idea of sculpture as an articulated, formed, uh, gestalted object that has ragged or, or star, st- how do you say that, staringly notion. Um, his, his stories or his sentences are, are not held until the end, they're not completed, they're not linear, linear they, they don't, they are not told in a linear manner, they are scattered. Yeah. They are kind of horizontally next to each other, intertwined um, psycho, political, social, physical ideas, materials, um, spaces, um, gestures, uh, failures, um, and they are always almost a foot. They are always in flux, and they are inseparable um, conglomerate of problems. And all of that together, it's that what I call sculpture, and mm-hmm. that occurs exactly to his work. Mm-hmm. You have a um, question with the body, but the nothing is direct. In, I mean, in your work, as in the work of Nauman, there's there's no um, uh, there's something which goes beyond the image. Also, you cannot capture or, or reduce as an image compared to some other. Uh, more classic sculptures. There's a link with the destruction and rebuild. There's a link with ghosts because she did an amazing show in Ghent uh, with the ghosts of her old work and taking the body as the first uh, tool in a way. That's how I discover your work with the the, the teeth in the show we, we did with that Jan but That's how we, did, we know each other. So also something to be without... Uh, classic in a way because the body is in the whole history of a sculpture, but with no representation and playing more the failure of the body. It's the opposite of the beauty or, or anything about that. I don't know if you had that dialogue with the works of Nauman and also from maybe the, the mental space uh, mm. that is for me trying to deal which I see something in your work also nothing is defined you, there's a kind of un- comfort uncomfort and it's not at all a question of aesthetic it's a question mm. of a mental space uh, with your work too maybe if not to go too much in my own work but maybe if I think of Norman and the relation that people bring up with the work of like a conceptual artist in opposite to the way how we are t- told to understand conceptual art, um, that is that introduces us an idea and then we form that idea into an object in front of our inner eyes. I think in Bruce Lamont's case, there is no fear of material mm-hmm. and uh, there is no fear of that complex flesh and the handing or handling of it. Um, I mean, just to think about some of the works, um, the hanging heads that yeah. was, I think, made for for two of the assistants, or fifteen pairs of hands, or the three um, heads fountains that was um, that I saw in Venice. But most important, one of one of the works that stays with like is important to me is hand to mouth from sixty seven. Yeah. Yeah. And it resonates the work of uh, Duchamp with my tongue in my cheek from uh, 59. On the one hand, the, the tongue of uh, Duchamp, on the, the work, uh, it is the basic of the function of the, the, the tongue. And the other hand, keeping 
tongue in the cheek means as well a re, is a refrain that says uh, be, avoiding to be nice or being kind and to say something what we are really thinking, avoiding something to say what we're really thinking. So that kind of thinking of the flesh in the same time, squeezing the meanings of, out of the words, turning them upside down to the left and right, there is something very similar to both. And I think what makes different is um, is there is a kind of pain in the material. He understands the material. He's not avoiding, there is no accident. There is a control, not control, but it's more structured. The understanding what the material is, the complication of the material that comes with all the political issues. It comes with these psychological issues. Um, I mean, now because you invited me to look closer to the to the work of Nam, and I allowed myself to go deeper into the work to understand mm. the yeah the, the complication of the materials as well, because they're also toxic. I mean, it, as you start working, mm. it is easier for me to talk about um, the dance, like where he came from, the, the friends that he had from Ivan Reina, whatever the references are to to Merce Cunningham, to mm. all the uh, peers that he had. That is for me clear what he chooses. Uh, why he dances or moves his body that he moves. But on the other side, as looking at his movings, it, it is actually forming as a, as a sculptural I, a sculptural notion in the moving. It is more about forming the body, less... Because I think what what he does is also simplifying in a beautiful way. He's breaking down even Yvonne Reyna's gestures that I actually like and I learned a lot. But he's not mimicking it. He, he brings that, he's bringing the idea of the dance, the casualty of the dance, the seriousness of, of the dance in a more, he makes it more, you have more empathy with it. It is more, the, it's even more humble than Ivan Reina did it. So I think the, that relation, it's, it, it's always been, uh, I always, yeah, the, the, he reduces the notion, that notion in contemporary dance even to more humble and easier gesture, less artificial, but with an immediate empathy, without overwhelming, overbearing. I mean, I think of the work um, Bouncing in the Corner, for example. Mm -hmm. That the work doesn't bear any superlative compliments, and that goes through all the works. So uh, I, would, I, would make, I wouldn't make, it wouldn't make any sense to, to talk to, heroize, the, the, to talk about the heroic aspect of the work because there is none. That's that's what we, we had some other discussion. This is something we all share in a way, uh, that lack of heroism with the 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 way he he go to be uncomfortable with his body, but as well as but in a very simple way, uh, making the, the the movement in the studio, making a video, but using the video, the time of the video. There's no effect on anything, and it's a, a fragile body. It's not at all a heroic body, and on his work. He refused, uh, he's someone who never goes to opening, he's not uh, showing off at all in terms of, uh, he's the opposite of a star artist, so to speak, and we met some com compare. And also uh, the latest work, he shows, he works with something so simple and back to the basic movement with the uh, walking in contraposto, but with his age, with his pain, with uh, the, the, uh, it's the opposite of, uh, of the hero. He always, on his work, kills his idea. I mean, I, I don't know him, so maybe, for me, it's not, it, it's not talking about the latter works. I mean, my engagement with Bruce Norman's work, especially the last one, is the need to save me from creating a personality cult around Bruce Norman. And I think, um, or distracting from the polyphony of, of his work. And I think that happened sometimes. I was at the Bayele in, in Basel, and I was looking around and listening to friends and, and people who were watching the films. I was irritated because I thought, how we're reacting to that film, how we're speaking about that film is telling a lot about our times. Like this creation of, of um, narratives, it is, it, is, it is the last, it's a problem of the last decade that we had. In the last decade, our view has been narrowed by the need of for, or the search of 
narratives. We, the search of the biographical, the artist uh, figure comes back again. And I felt pity for that film because I thought actually it is, it is the same figure, it is the same questions, it is the same complication that he had in the earlier, the walk with the contrapposto in 68. Nothing has changed. The, the thinking of, of uh, I don't know what he thinks, at least as a recipient of the work, I have the same, same questions. I have the same um, idea of the movement. Um, but translated in our times, he would not do the same thing, not because of the body doesn't allow, but because our times of, of understanding movement, um, even dance has, has changed. So he's going with the time. He's not going to mimic the things that even Rena has taught us or he learned from that. So even the sense of how he goes with the time, he shows with his movement of the body. I'm not concentrated if it's himself or not. And I would like to make that, that is important for me, that it's not, that I'm not talking about Bruce Nauman who stands there and doing it. It is for me, the, the body that is, that is part of the light, part of the studio, part of the space, part of the sound, as it was at, in, at the work, in the work walk with the Contra, uh, Contra Postal 68. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, I don't agree that it is an aging body that he's showing. I'm not, I'm not agreeing to, to be close to that um, interpretation. I think then I would really think of the cult of the person. And I don't know who is, and you know, I don't know uh, who Bruce Nauman is. It's not, but it, there is a huge difference in contrast to boys, for example, if, who always focus on his persona as the beer and vehicle of mm -hmm. his art. Mm -hmm. I have the impression in contrast to that, uh, Bruce Nauman, or that at Bruce Nauman, it is needed to forget him as a persona in favor of, of oneself. I mean, even though he experimented with his body and himself as an artist in the 60s, he brought always the viewer, the space, the object, the equally, the sound equally was, fo he was focused on what was the focus of his attention. So I don't see really a difference in, in the new work. Well, it poses a question, you know, which is throughout history, if one may say that, you know, I mean, um, how do artists relate to their own images in their work? And I'm not thinking so much of, of modern times, but I'm also thinking about, you know, um, let's say, uh, you know, Titian and how he appears or figurations of him appear in, so, in some of the works, you know, not in the sense of an exaltation of him as an, as, as an author. I mean, and the question of self-portraiture, right, which sees... Uh, as old as art, you know, it's, it's a, I mean, I think those questions are there, you know, are these uh, self-portraits and what does it mean to, to do a self-portrait? But I think it started at the time that, I mean, at least the earlier works and he continues that, but at the time it was working with other, being in a collective, working in groups, that was a common thing. If you think of Yvonne Reyna with Robert Morris and the, uh, um, Merce Cunningham with Rosenberg or uh, just by Jones. So the collaboration and, and w coming together and working with your own body was not something yeah. exceptional and taking it as an object, but it was not a heroic act. It was not a, a an artistic act. Yes. Um, and especially with him, I mean, when we compare even Reina and, and him, he even reduces that aspect of uh, self orientations, like that artificial idea of moving. Um, he's breaking it almost down to something even more casual than Ivan Rene ever would dream of. And I think he, he would definitely agree with that. I, I, I think that there were, there were some of the early critics, you know, were re discussing his work in terms of narcissism. And, and for him, that was missing completely the point. But even the idea of the in, uh, inner and out, like interior world and outside world, at that time, the outside world and interior world was very kind of the same. So he, I think from that part of the mix of interior and exterior, that was the street, that was meeting people, discussing things, going back to the self-made interior exterior to one thing as a studio, that was radical, I think. Like to take that courage to do that. That was radical.
So the newest work is called Nature Mort, which is a very, very classic reference in a way, or very timeless uh, experiment and something everyone knows coming from the art or not. And he just scanned the studio and you can move yourself in his studio through an iPad. It's... Um, uh, I'm intrigued by the fact that he he's playing with new tools that he can have. This is a technology uh, which it's new, but it's so simple on the same time. And there's a sense of humor, I think, I think in his work, which we don't speak so much about. But it's so naked that it wakes you up in a way and you cannot stop laughing. Uh, and same thing with the words or with the non-words. Uh, the mouth with something coming out, but which is not words. Is it before words? Uh, where I see also a link with the Beckett for me, um, which is in between words. So nothing is defined. It depends also of how you look at it, how you make it yours in a way. There's no definition. There's also that with the, the sculptures in a way that you share. You cannot define your sculptures. You have to experiment and then change the space. I never thought of the humor in the work, but I remember the work that I I had problems with was the clown, the, which to me was, I think I saw it um, in, in, at our institute, I'm not sure, but I, I remember that I was irritated by that because it's, it's the first time that I thought he's using a very symbolic work it is just because it, mm -hmm. almost there is no symbolic in his work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and I always love the, the work that it says uh, the artist helps the world by revealing mystic truth yeah. and for the first time I thought wow this is such an amazing piece because he he the words become sign and the sign becomes sculpture or it becomes more than it, like it's a co co combination of all of that and it, it, it gets rid of the idea of the hocus pocus in art, the, the mystification of it, the mystification of the truthful art, whatever it is. But then I saw that the, and maybe humor is part of it, that in that specific work, the clown work, I, I could not deal with it. I, I think that the clown, you know, the figure of the clown is an important figure for him. I think that, you know, it is, it goes back to this whole, you know, modern lineage of the, you know, I would say modern, you know, starting with the Pulcinella in, in 18th century Venetian work, you know, I mean, this, this profound idea of the, again, the, the tragic comedy of life, right? And I think that the works of the clown is the emergence of something that is throughout the work, you know, because the true artist, which I love, I adore the work. I believe in, in what he, in the work, you know, profoundly, but it's also a joke. You know, I mean, you, you look at it and you say, is this a joke? I mean, are you joking? Yeah, and that, that, that kind of thing, are you joking? You know, that interpolation, you know, uh, I think it's something that goes throughout the work, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes it vibrate. It makes it, it makes it fragility uh, poignant. I think that's a very important point. I mean, I, I like the lightness. I, I like the humbleness of the works. I mean, Duchamp has, has sometimes humor, and he, he even talks about it, but I, I don't know if he talks about it, but there, there is a kind of humor in it. That is my experience with the work of, of um, Bruce Nauman. I don't have that kind of humor. I have um, casuality in it, even if it's, it's dark, and even if it's, it's a failure, even if it's a disappointment. There is... There is something that, as if you could digest your own thoughts, if everything is digestible, you can form and deform it. But it doesn't let you go with a humor. I don't have that humor that, sometimes humor comes in and it takes you away from, like it, it is a, I don't know what it is, but the complication in his work, I don't think he has that kind of humor as addition. I don't, I don't at least I, don't, I haven't experienced it. It's interesting, you know, when you mentioned Duchamp, you mentioned Duchamp a couple of times, Neri, and I, I, you know, I, I inhabit it in Philadelphia, of course. You know, I've always said that for me, you know, coming to the museum, I'm, I'm Argentinian, you know, so, so that was not my the collection, most of it. I mean, there were many things to me that were foreign, as I had spent a lot of time thinking about other artists. But, 
you know, there is there the museum, this sort of a dialogue between Duchamp and Jones and Nauman. And it's a very, very intricate dialogue. And I think that my access to each of them is through the others. And, and that makes me wonder if, if you feel that your access to, 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 to Nauman is also mediated by, you mentioned mm-hmm. Cunningham or Yvonne Reiner or, or, um, or Duchamp. I mean, how, do you think that you, when you look at Nauman, are there other voices in the, in the room? Even you use metal, uh, metal or cassette materials, you can't compare him to Sarah. Mm-hmm. Like even Sarah's earlier works, the catching. Yes. Um, uh, in, in his case, uh, in Nauman's case, it is more, uh, much more directed to affirm the work of like the affirmers, like from... Mm-hmm. Uh, f- f- through video, experimental work, sound, to a fahesa. So the the fearlessness or being interested in the, the toxic material, it tells a lot about your political, mental, psycho, social idea of how you deal with a material, how you work with something that it's so should be rejective. Mm-hmm. And he takes it, he takes it as a fahesa did it. Not only in, in terms of material, but how he was thinking of the form is not something that you can control, even if he controlled it. But it, the form tells there are some some promises in that, or capacity or potential in that material that um, there is, there is no way for a fixation of mm-hmm. like an identity as a fixed um, notion. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's beautiful the way in which you talk about sculpture and. You know, this idea of form as a, as a universe, a constellation, you know, something that, you know, exceeds materiality, you know, in which language is part of it. it, it I was reading, there is a book, a, a recent book by Christopher Wood. He's an art historian on the history of art history, right? And the section about contemporary art is very negative, you know, it's very often, right? We see this very often. And, Which is a and good that, thing, actually. Well, I think it's a, it comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of what contemporary art is, which, you know, I mean, he's a medievalist, and so we cannot blame him for that. But he basically reconstructs the history of art and saying that it's a history of form, and form is negated in the modern period. And I think that what you're saying is, which I'm hearing, is form is not negated. It's superseded by a more, more, more complex understanding of the relationship between materials and language. I mean, we were just speaking about Duchamp's piece, the the, uh, the cheek, cheek, yes. yeah, like understanding for material, um, um, uh, burden of the material, the history of the material. All of that, it's it, it couldn't be more um, urgent for us to think about it. Also, the burden of of objects that are visible, they are transported, they are seated somewhere else, they are stolen, all that kind of things mm-hmm. is without the, without, the, without the actual thing we would not do art. I, I believe that. And I think uh, Bruce Lemon is one of the examples. Uh, and I think it's nice to call him conceptual artist with all of the sculptural a- aspects that he seriously discussed. It is that sculpture like objects, they're on, they are not unse- inseparable from their their conceptual identities. Like mm-hmm. the whole, sure. here's one of the examples that conceptual art maybe has been until now misunderstood. Maybe it is, mm-hmm. it is more complex than we have been taught until now. I mean, even now when we try to understand, like now I'm looking at myself, looking at you, it could be almost in my studio, it's almost like a uh, Norman's uh, experience. But um, using him as going through these times, it's almost too flat for me because I think all his works are would fit in any kind of time. They yes. because there are never answers because answer can be questions can be work can I mean good work is not an answer and certainly not in Bruce Naman's case because then would be very much related to their specific time and his is is not related to all of these times it is related to any time I think. Because this question appears and appears.